When your game does this, what? And this. Oh, my game crashed. Yes. Fourth crash we've had. About one crash an hour we've been getting. This is sick. Nah, it's sniper. All right, well, we'll just spawn back in. And what, what, what is this? What? What? Am I falling? What the hell? What the heck is going on? Oh my god. But then also does that. Look at this guy up in the tower up here. I think so. Oh wait. Oh, there's too many good stuff over here. Yes! <laughs> Quad feed, baby, let's go. <laughs> you feel a bit of a dilemma between yourself about if you whether or not you like a game. And that's basically how I feel about the Modern Warfare 2 beta. Where the core gameplay actually felt really good, felt really fun to play, but then there were just so many things getting in the way when it came to actually playing the game, it really kind of soured the experience. What is going on with these animations? Oh my god. Now this beta is just a small section of what Modern Warfare 2 has to offer, so it's really impossible to truly get a sense of how this multiplayer will play based off the little playtime that we've all had. Plus these Call of Duty betas are really just more promotional demos just to give you a feel of what the current developer is working on for whatever Call of Duty is coming out that year. While the game felt really good to play, it ran terribly. Now the platform I play on is on PC. I didn't have a chance to play on any of the consoles. One, because I don't really own a console. I don't own a PlayStation. I play on PC. Plus Modern Warfare 2018 and later PC ports have been very well made. Now I have a 3080 graphics card, a 5900X CPU. I used DLS. I was running 144 frames. I mean, Ground War was getting like sub 100 sometimes, but overall it felt really good when the game actually worked. So the idea of this beta is really just to kind of give you an idea of what to expect for the game. And when it runs so poorly, that doesn't look good for the game. But you know, one thing that was really good with this beta, proximity chat. <laughs> Call of Duty's back, baby. And this beta was the biggest beta Call of Duty's ever had. The most play time, the most players, everything else in between. This was the most important beta Infinity Ward and Activision have ever had. So in this video, I'm going to talk through my thoughts and experiences of this Modern Warfare 2 beta. We're talking about like the maps, the modes, loadouts, weapons, equipment, perks, kill streaks, movement, uh, how trash the UI is and everything in between. So if you find this video entertaining at any point, please make sure to tap that like button as it is the best way to support the channel. And let me know you want to see some more content like this. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! So let's talk about the maps. It's one of the most important parts of a game. It can really make or break the gameplay experience as a whole. As we saw with Modern Warfare 2019, Bella returned to form, but the maps certainly were not. A map can really turn an average weapon on paper into an overpowered monster. The map is too small, SMGs and shotguns dominate. If it's too large, well, then you're playing Call of Duty Ghost all over again. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. So with my time at the beta, I had a chance to play Farm 18, Valderas Museum, Mercado Las Armas, Greenberg Hotel, Sarif Bay, and Said. Take note how there was one missing from that list. We'll get into that a little bit. But overall, a lot of the 6v6 maps felt really flat with like specific points of elevation and a lot of right angles. Valderas Museum is the biggest example of this. The map looks and plays like a total blockout map. Everything is just kind of empty, lacks character, very rudimentary, and all just kind of leading to a very stale type of gameplay. Plus the map is just way too big for 6v6. It's like the blend between 6v6 and like Ground War. Classic Ground War would actually probably work out really well. The other maps like Farm 18, Mercado Las Armas, and Breenberg Hotel were rather flat, but with specific points of elevation. Like you knew like where the high point is on the map, right? But the overall had like pretty good flow with some interesting angles thrown in there, but the maps did feel very cookie cutter. Certainly less safe spaces compared to 2019. Uh, our maps are a little bit more por porous um, and you know we want those players to have a, a safe place. To are you sure about that? Now remember how I said there was one map that was missing? Yeah, Grand Prix. Remember that map they showcased of the very first map we got a chance to officially see from Call of Duty and it was nowhere to be seen in the beta? Well, Call of Duty has removed all the videos and marketing for the map Grand Prix for all those social media accounts and it's like nowhere to be seen all of a sudden when it was like the first map to showcase 
indicates like, oh, this is really awesome. Modern Warzone, who I sourced with there, said he even had a chance to play on the map and it was by far his favorite map. So this begs the question, where did it go? Citing that was most likely removed from social media is because of licensing, since it is an actual Formula One racetrack and it takes place in Singapore within the Marina Bay circuit. So this could be an issue of just actually just copyright infringement or something weird like that getting in the way of the fun. Now, maybe Infinity Ward is reworking the art style of the map, but they don't have to call it Marina Grand Prix to so avoid all that copyright stuff. Activision has been known to cut corners when it comes to saving money on licensing. I mean, we have the Kvasta 74U, which is really the AK 74U that we know from traditional Call of Duty, but just renamed something different, most likely to avoid having to pay for licensing. There's also a rumor that the Modern Warfare 2 classic maps will come into Modern Modern Warfare 2 as a bit of like a one year update, which would be really exciting. As we do know, there are some classic maps Maps already within this game, like Quarry, that's straight up just Quarry from Modern Warfare 2 within Warzone. Players recently found the map Strike from Modern Warfare 2 within one of the Ground War maps. Very interesting. And plus, we also know about High Rise likely being in the Warzone map as well, so we could see a lot of remakes coming our way in. Which is great for me as a Call of Duty boomer, because I've been playing since 2009. I have to keep up with all the zoomers and relearn all the maps. Now, what comes with maps? comes with spawns as well. And basically, they just copy and paste the same spawn system from Modern Warfare 2019 into this game. Now, I didn't experience any terrible spawning when it comes to this game. I've seen terrible spawns. I've played terrible spawns within Modern Warfare 2019, and they could be pretty bad. With Infinity Ward utilizing squad spawns, it makes map flow and prediction of enemy placement very difficult. This clip right here from Modern Warzone really shows why. I could have just had one of the most ridiculous clips of my life. That was the craziest sp squad spawn I've ever seen. You can see there was one guy on that side of the map. The whole team spawns on him. He gets flanked for no reason whatsoever, essentially. There is zero spawn logic in this game, which can be extremely frustrating and really mess up the flow and make things just feel way more chaotic than they need to be. And Call of Duty is already a crazy, chaotic, casual game. Obviously, you have to play modes on these maps, and I got a chance to play a little bit of everything when it comes to this. We had TDM and Domination. I mean, it's TDM and Domination in Call of Duty. What do you expect? It's the same thing. Play a little Search and Destroy, and then what? You know what? It plays like Search and Destroy. Pretty cool right there. We also have the new modes, Prisoner Rescue and Knockout. Now, these modes were like, all right. They're interesting takes on the single elimination mode in Call of Duty. I did solo queue into these modes and it was pretty awful to play. These modes are definitely meant to be played with your friends. We have the glorious tried and true Search and Destroy mode and you come to your friends like, hey, we should play Prisoner Rescue or Knockout. What do you think your friends are gonna say? No, man. Shit, no, man. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. Ultimately, they're nice additions for your single elimination mode fans. I like my respawn modes and maybe a little bit of search and destroy with friends. Got a chance to play the new mode, Invasion, which has 20 v 20 with AI thrown in there as well. And from what I played, I like it. I think having the bots in there is, is a nice mix of the kind of keep things moving, have something to shoot at. But TDM, which is the only mode to play Invasion on, is awful. Let's take this clip, for example. So I just spawned in and bam. I'm dead. That's pretty dang frustrating. Guy head glitching over a corner with a sniper rifle. It's a TDM game. There's no point for him to move, but and there's no way to spawn anywhere else besides at your base in this mode either, which again makes it pretty difficult to move around. I have to run out to the open to get into the action because that's where I spawned. And guess what? I get sniped again by a guy mounted on a ledge. Like this is not a rare occasion. This happens all the time. Since these are played on ground war maps, which are just sections of the battle royale map cut out to make into a ground war map, they're not really designed for like a 20v20, 32v32 kind of player versus player environment. Essentially in TDM, especially with Invasion, everyone gets a rooftop or a window. It's really annoying. The AI in the mode was all right. It was just a little something extra to shoot at while you're waiting for finding real players to shoot at. But they're really only the purpose is just to provide extra total score. I think it would have been really cool if the AI counted towards your kill streak, of course, at like a very reduced score point. But I think that would just make it much more more personal benefit rather than just like slaying these AI bots for one point just to help your team out just a little bit. When you're exposing yourself, you're wasting your ammo. It just doesn't really have that much benefit to taking out AI in the game. Though, the AI wasn't really smart in the first place. Oftentimes just running in a straight line out in the middle of the fields or streets and stuff like that. Rarely did I ever see him like walking through buildings or something like that. The pathing 
is pretty simple on them. But yeah, invasion, like it's a good idea. Maybe if you throw in objective modes in there, but TDM is just awful. Now here's the sleeper mode I was talking about earlier before I had a chance to play this beta, but I thought this actually might be something pretty special, Ground War. I think this is gonna be something that's gonna be really cool to play in Modern Warfare 2. This is the one mode I really found score streaks to be actually useful within the game. More on score streaks and kill streaks a little bit later in this video. The kill streaks and vehicle play felt way better than 2019. Of course, this is only a small section of the multiplayer we have a chance to play, but I'm just so happy White Phosphorus is not in this game. And the reason why I called Ground War in Modern Warfare 2 a sleeper mode, because I feel like it genuinely can compete with Battlefield 2042. It really does provide that large scale game mode that you're kind of missing with a modern military shooter, which Battlefield 2042 tried to do, uh, but fundamentally, I think they kind of flopped on the game design of that one. I don't think you can ever really capture the true Battlefield 4 feels, but Modern Warfare 2 kind of does. Of course, that's when the servers are actually working. There was one time I was playing, I was having straight up like just choppy freaking lag. It was like I was playing like Doom animation quality gameplay. What is going on with these animations? Oh my god. And like I stated earlier, these ground war maps are just sections ripped out of Warzone and cut up to make them into a ground war map. It's a good way to save on resources and they work out all, all right. Like some modes and maps do work out okay with ground war uh, though some of the lines of sights and the flow of the maps definitely do feel like they're not specifically designed sorry if bay and saya definitely have their fair share of buildings and windows and alleyways where it could just be a bit much to try to keep track of everything especially on serif bay all the flags on that map in general are super far apart where the gameplay just felt super slow very dragged out not really fun though Sayed flag placement was perfect Perfectly chaotic, but manageable. It was a ton of fun. I found the best strategy on Syed. It was just to take care of a couple points, like two or three different flags, kind of run between them, utilizing score streaks to either capture the flags or take them back or take or defend them. And I was able to get like a VTOL off of just having like six kills. It was awesome. Now this next mode, I don't understand really why it's in the game in the first place. It kind of reminds me of like that one scene from Half Baked with Jon Stewart character where he like sits down, he's like, have you ever played Call of Duty? in third person and the reason why i feel like that because you're basically just playing modern warfare 2 but in third person this mode was never popular previously and i feel like the only reason why it's in there is just so they can say they have something else new to the game like some dev in the corners kind of dusted off some code and just was like hey hey guys check out look what i made i got third person working again in the game plus third person viewing angles when it comes to shooters i feel are fundamentally flawed for games like Call of Duty, even Gears of War, if it was put into Halo, it'd be pretty flawed, where you're able to peek around corners without exposing the character, so you can really abuse the camera angles to get information about where your enemies are without having to take the risk of exposing yourself to see where those players are. It's kind of the whole risk-reward thing when it comes to shooters. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there, maybe in the comments, who will say they like third-person mode. Personally, I don't care at all. I played one game and I was like, yep, that's third-person, it's Call of Duty, but in third-person. I don't care. Now it can't be Call of Duty unless you have some awesome weapons, equipment, field upgrades and things like that. And let me tell you, the sound and feel of these weapons are absolutely on point. And I'm so glad Infinity Ward did not carry over this weird Vanguard feature, which was Bloom in the game where your first shot accuracy was randomized. Who in their right mind thought that was a good idea? I couldn't tell you. The sound, the feel, and the visuals were just so amazing, I could barely hold on to my gun because the visual recoil and the screen shake and the smoke that comes from your gun makes it so hard to aim in this game. This was the one Call of Duty where I'm like, dude, I genuinely need a red dot sight just to be able to visually track players while I'm shooting at them. Them. There were definitely some imbalanced weapons. I mean, look at this ridiculous sniping clip. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's gonna get nerfed at some point. Because who needs a shotgun when you can just shoot anybody with one shot at any distance? Though the shotgun in this game was really nasty. Crossplay and shit. Will you be oh my god. This shot. Even though this is a clip from the Warzone beta, you can kind of see he's able to shred the full shielded, three shielded person with one shot. Yeah, 
This shotgun is nasty. I saw a lot of people say that the MP5 was overpowered, as with the weapon selection that we had available for us guys, the context within the beta, yeah, it probably was overpowered. So we have to really wait for the full game before we start pulling out our nerf rifles to go, okay, you're the next one to go. And we have field upgrades coming back as well. I like the field upgrades from 2019. I thought it was a kind of a nice little addition that kind of create like a bit of like an ultimate ability, which kind of helps vary up the gameplay. And so it's not the same thing the entire time. Though Dead Silence is a field upgrade and we'll definitely talk about that in a bit. I know a lot of people within the community have complained that the time to kill in this game is really fast. And I'm like, yeah. It's Call of Duty. I remember back in Modern Warfare 2, if you had stopping power on, you can kill somebody in two shots with a fully auto rifle shooting like 900 rounds. Like, that's insanely fast. But this graph right here, created by Exclusive Ace, really just put in context how fast the time to kill is. Like, yeah, it's a little bit faster when it comes to what we've previously had last few years, but compared to the older Call of Duties, like Modern Warfare 2 with stopping power, that is way, way faster. Now, ultimately, I think we're just kind of splitting hairs when it comes to milliseconds and how fast it comes to killing players in this game. I mean, me coming from the Halo scene, uh, it's all quick to me. And honestly, there was a lot of times where I'm like, how come I didn't get that fast time to kill? I think it's perfect in this game. I honestly do. Because I feel like the whole thing about Call of Duty, there's not really like gunfights that you have like you do in Halo. It's all about tactical positioning, map knowledge, weapon proficiency, and be able to outflank your opponents. Basically like hide and seek, but with guns. The Gunsmith from 2019 returns, of course, obviously tweaked and Right now, I don't mind it. I think it's kind of a cool way to be able to like, get players to utilize different weapons to get what they want, essentially. Because you have these receivers about like halfway through the leveling of a weapon that you can switch over and play with that weapon then. So if you want like the M16, you have to start with the M4, which then the receiver, you can go up to the upper level tree, I guess that's what I call it. Then you have to play around with the LMG version. And then you want the LMG, you get the M16. Previously in Call of Duty, you just utilize the same weapon until you got to an X level and then you're able to use the meta gun then. Just helps bring a little bit more variety when it comes to the gunplay. Of course, you now with this beta, we have a very small selection, but I can see what they're doing and I kind of like the idea. Now for equipment, it's all pretty much standard stuff. I mean, you got your tacticals, you got your lethals. The shock stick had a really fun sound effect. Shock stick out! As you can tell, I'm a bit of a Halo fan. Don't worry, he'll be remade someday. And the drill charge, I actually slept on, but once I saw this clip, I was shocked. Where if you throw a drill charge on, say, like a tank or something like that, it will actually kill everyone within that tank, which is super cool. This is one of the best anti-vehicle things I think has ever been added to Call of Duty. It actually adds a certain level of skill uh, and also just ability to have it. And also it creates a little bit of a limitation because you can't really utilize them much like a regular grenade. You have to really make sure they go through a wall or through a vehicle or something like that to really get the kill. This is an awesome addition. I totally slept on this and I'm really excited to jump back in and play some more Ground War and I'll definitely be using the drill charge like all the time. One of the most important parts, if not maybe even the most important part of your loadout are the perk selections and how you synergize it all together. We have a lot of very similar perks from 2019 coming back in for Modern Warfare 2 with a few new ones. Though all the perks are tied to like a package system, which I'm gonna save for when I'm talking about the UI. Don't worry, the UI is gonna get it. Infinity Ward oddly reinvented the wheel when it comes to how your perks work within the game. Where it's now it's performance slash time based in the match how you unlock these perks and honestly i didn't mind it i thought it was kind of an interesting twist in the whole perk system uh maybe going this route will allow infinity war to design perks in a way to be a little bit more powerful towards the end and maybe not so powerful in the beginning because there's always been like really interesting perk balance to say the least when it comes to call of duty so you have your perks like ghost overclock and bird's eye probably more towards the end though on like the very last day of the beta infinity war did introduce a change to the increase the perk earn rates across all modes so then you can fine tune things so, so then you actually unlock your perks a little bit faster which sadly enough I wasn't able to play that day so I didn't really have a chance but from what I've heard people actually enjoyed it where it's kind of like a nice blend between classic perk system and the modern perk system though right now I would still say I prefer the traditional perk system but I think I just need a little bit more play time with it to really have a true understanding of how game affecting this new perk system is though going through the perks a lot of them are very similar like I mentioned earlier but one really gave me straight up ptsd flashbacks and that was survivor and the description is on death enter last stand with the ability to self-revive once per life teammates can revive downed players faster and once i read that i literally had ptsd flashbacks oh, 
Oh my God, the memories. Though apparently with Survivor, you're only just down. You have the ability to revive yourself and that's it. There are actually no invincibility frames, which is the biggest issue with the blob shot. And you don't explode like Final Stand, so I can live with this. I could definitely see this being much more useful as a perk, say like in Prisoner Rescue or Search and Destroy for the one life modes. Uh, for the respawn modes, I don't really see many people use it. I didn't think I came across it like maybe once. Still annoying, but didn't break the game. Though there's one perk I know the community has been crying for and it's sorely missing right now, and that is dead silence. Though it did return as a field upgrade, a lot of people are not happy about that. They want dead silence as an actual perk you can have on your character. I mean, the audio in this game, like I mentioned earlier, is on point, but maybe a little too on point. Yeah, the footsteps are definitely elephant style, guys. If I can hear them, and I've got crap ears, they're loud. It really seems like Infinity Ward really wants players to utilize their ears and eyes when it comes to fighting out where enemies are rather than relying on the UI. But the thing I have to think about is if Dead Silence was a perk, it would be the dominant meta perk for any tier it would be in. And then Infinity Ward it would have to create either a perk or a piece of equipment or some kind of counter for that perk alone. And how exactly you do it, where you do it, where you place it in the game, it can be a bit of a mess. Though it seems like Infinity Ward nerfed Dead Silence even more in this game. What? This guy have dead silence? The fuck was that? Oh, he did have dead silence. Yeah, Infinity Ward added in like this radio click microwave sound when you first activate dead silence just to nerf it even more, I guess. Like, it's, like the Infinity Ward just wants people, everyone to play like a true sentinel. Ultimately, I don't really see this changing anytime soon, unless it's like a year two update with Modern Warfare 2 that we could see dead silence or something like that as a perk. Uh, but ultimately, I think we're just gonna be seeing this staying the same for the most part. Now, what is your reward for doing awesome in Call of Duty? Well, you get the pwn noobs even more with kill streaks and actually the kill streaks in this game are pretty fun i do love the addition that they made with this game where you can just toggle on and off score streak or kill streak why has it been taking this long for call of duty to get this as like a feature i don't know why Took you long enough. Though I did find that score streaks were really only useful in ground war for the most part, as capturing flags does actually add to your score. I mean, you do have domination, right? But the gameplay is so fast that you really only have like streaks. You can't really continue on really a whole lot. At least from my experience, I found kill streaks being more useful in the 6v6 fast paced modes and ground war having to be much more of a score based mode. And like I said earlier, thank God they removed white phosphorus. It was the most annoying thing in the game, especially playing in ground war. It would come up all the time in 2019, like every single game. And it just like, I'd be punished for just spawning into the game. It was so annoying. We do have a new kill streak though with the bomb drone, basically like an airborne Air RCXE from Black Ops. We also have the cluster mine as well, which kind of played out all right. The drone was kind of hard to fly around with. And the cluster mine only got to use like once because, well, skill based matchmaking puts me against sweat lords and I'm not that good against those guys anymore. Incredible leaker Ralph Valve did say that there will be a nuke in Modern Warfare 2. It'll just be included in a future beta patch, but I didn't really see this or hear this at all. Of course, I didn't really seek out gameplay of it, but it is in there. It's just somewhere in the mix. Now we have to talk about the elephant in the room with every Call of Duty now. Skill-based matchmaking, and it's now how it's infested all of modern shooters right now, and it is definitely still there in Modern Warfare 2, just as tight and as strict and just as sweaty as Infinity Ward likes it. Now, I understand having, like, loose skill-based matchmaking with, like, brand new players, maybe even young children, people with disabilities, or, in you know, people who are just, like, not good at the game. Yeah, I shouldn't match against them, because I've been playing Call of Duty for over a decade now at this point. So I've played the game long enough to where I'm a decent player. I know what I'm doing, but according to Call of Duty skill-based matchmaking, I'm trying to go pro. This strict skill-based matchmaking, but more engagement-based matchmaking makes my gameplay experience just feel like a total algorithm. Where if I do well, I'll get placed in a higher bracket, I'll get dunked on, and if I get placed into a proper lobby, I might pull out a game where I do all right, and then it's just all right, back to the pile, you're getting pounded on. I'm back in the pile. Back in the pile, everyone.
We're going back to the pile. Jump in on everybody! everybody. We're going back. And just like Dead Silence in this game being a field upgrade, I don't see skill-based matchmaking or engagement-based matchmaking changing anytime soon. I guess I'll just have to keep waiting for my engagement lobbies to keep me playing the game. There have been some minor but rather significant changes when it comes to the movement within Call of Duty, the big one being no slide canceling. I love that he took this out because it was so annoying to have a play against people who were like really sweating in Call of Duty that, you know, being that skill based matchmaking. I definitely came across it quite a lot and it was just really annoying seeing people just like sliding around the map, booty sliding, ripping their shorts on the map and just leaving it all over the floor like, come on man, clean yourself up. But as gamers always do, they uh, find a way. Within just a few days of the beta, people were able to figure out a way to slide cancel. This is like some kind of thing you have to change your settings within the menu in some way to allow yourself to be able to do this. Now, I didn't bother with this because I am not a sweat lord, but when it comes to this game, I definitely would like to see this not happen. Though I did find the majority of players didn't really utilize this X player from the lobbies I was getting in, so maybe I'm not getting into the COD tournament level bracket when it comes to skill-based matchmaking. And Infinity War did state they are looking to fix this X player so they can take out slide canceling out of the game, which is great to hear. I just hope they're able to act upon it before the month before this game actually releases. But don't worry, if you're a crackhead, you could still play Call of Duty like you're on fire. With this Twitter clip almost having 5,000 views, you see how just like the modern Call of Duty player kind of plays nowadays. And it's just like insane. Obviously they're doing this as a bit of an exaggeration to showcase what you can do. But like, I'm getting dizzy just watching this guy move around the map. It's ridiculous. And he's actually doing well and outplaying people. It's ridiculous. They brought back the dolphin dive for this game, which is a really cool Black Ops 1 callback. I actually like that feature. It's a great way to nerf the drop shot because people used to just sprint drop shot. It's one way to kind of nerf that a little bit, but people found a way to cancel that as well. And the movement god Shotzi himself even found a way to do a super bounce off of belly flop. So there are certainly a lot of things that Infinity Ward needs to look at when it comes to nerfing these things because that is just absurd. You're belly flopping off of a roof onto a car to super bounce back up. What? The ledge hang pistol ladder mechanic is really nice addition to this game. I think it's more of a war zone mechanic rather than like a 6v6 ground war kind of thing. I really didn't utilize it a whole lot, mainly because of the map design didn't really call for it. And when I did do it, it was more by accident rather than actually trying to do it. And most of the time I ran with the shotgun secondary because, oh, the shotgun is so good in this game. But I did manage to utilize a pistol kill on the ladder. Enemy is taking Charlie. I get a kill. Please. Yes! <laughs> I did it. With the removal of slide canceling, now the new thing is jump shotting where you tack sprint, jump, fling yourself with the momentum around the corner, and land the shots. And I saw this a lot when it comes to playing this game. Oh my god, dude, that guy was cracked. Holy crap. Look at this guy. Tack sprinting, dolphin diving, jump around the corners, pinpoint actually. Holy crap. <laughs> The drip. It really became like a meta movement where you really had to go about and doing the jump shot around the corner to get onto people because if you're not doing it, they're doing it back to you. We trade one villain for another. So I would like to see maybe like the jumping mechanic or some kind of momentum change when it comes to the movement in this game. So then jump shotting around corners isn't so prevalent and almost kind of needed to do to get the jump on players. Though again, I might see a small change to this. I think that's possible. I don't see anything drastic happen, so this is pretty much going to be here to stay. With modern live service multiplayer games, customization has been more important than ever. People love customizing their characters, expressing themselves in the game to show them how unique or how cool they are within the game, to showcase some accolades or just some cool stuff that they found. Well, the customization in this game is just as boring as it was back in 2019. It's really just meant to sell operators. This is something I think Halo, especially even Halo Infinite, has really excelled in. You really do start to feel like you've created your own character within the world. With Call of Duty, you're like, well, this one doesn't look that bad and I'll just pick it and there'll be like 20 other people on the map that look just like me. It's not that interesting. That's why they put so much emphasis on the sale of operators to try to get you to get that money. Let's just say it ain't no Halo MCC. One aspect of the customization they really improved on though was the assassinations because they were super jank in Modern for 2019. Oh, we are now recording. Do it. <laughs> okay.
Yeah, we gotta get on my end. <laughs> the pistol is behind <laughs> me, pointed at my shoulder. But in Modern Warfare 2, we're pushing like Gears of War level of brutality at some of these, and the animations have improved greatly. Oh my god, I felt that one. Oh, ugh. I get chills looking at that. I just really hope that this next Call of Duty doesn't really delve too much into the, the weird wacky stuff that we've seen previously with the game, which I probably would expect to see happen, uh, but like something like Vanguard has completely gone off the rails. I mean, look at this. This is Call of Duty. You'd think this is like Destiny 2 or like the new game Scorn. No, this is, this is Call of Duty Vanguard coming into the game. This is like the newest customization coming in like this. This is shouldn't happen. This is not Call of Duty. Oh, but I've been saving this one towards the end, guys. And oh, it needs to be roasted, burned to the ground, eliminated, people fired or something because the UI in Modern Warfare 2 is absolutely awful. Know your fucking place, trash. I mean, it looks cool. Don't get me wrong. I think the visual style of it is great but the functionality of it is the worst I have ever used in a first person shooter game. The friends list is absolutely awful. First of all, you only see like three at a time unless you select the grid option, but then it doesn't sort by who's online. It doesn't sort by alphabetical. It only sorts by platform, which is like, I don't care what platform you play on. I care who you are because I want to play with you. And it took me over six minutes to figure out how to invite people from my Twitch chat into the game. That is absurd. It shouldn't happen. It's like one of the easiest functions that we've been doing since the original Xbox Live back in 2003, I think, when that relaunched. And this is the UI that we get and how difficult it is. We have like, oh, what's your actual name? I see your name on the game, but what's your actual name? What's your account? What's this? What's that? How do I find it? It was a total pain. There are just so many steps. It was confusing as hell. Talking about confusing as hell, the perk system. Oh my God, the perk package thing was the most confusing thing I've ever had to deal with in a Call of Duty game. With the UI utilizing this horizontal sliding thing, it makes me forget about what kind of options I actually have available within this. It was super confusing when I clicked on my perk package and it showed like other perk packages I didn't create. Because come on, let's be real. You ever use the developer set like packs? No, they're always awful. And so you never use them, but they came up first and I have to like scroll through to try to find it. It was annoying. It's weird that you have your list of perk setups in a horizontal line. That's really weird. Think about when you're making a grocery list, right? You make a top to bottom list. So when you check something off, it's easy to see that's off the list down to the next one. That's easy to read. That's why people literally make a grocery list, a laundry list. This is not a list. This is just a mess of UI. Now I saved the perk package thing for the UI discussion here because I think this really kind of ties into more the UI rather than how the perks are in this game because the perk package system might seem like a good idea on paper, right? Most people kind of create classes like a stealth class, an aggressive class, or a sentinel class, if you will. <laughs> And your classes are highly dependent on your perks, so that would make sense to kind of like section it off so you can just kind of copy paste your perks in there. But the thing is, you create classes as a holistic piece, right? You got your weapon, your equipment, your field to upgrade, and your perks. Even your kill streaks play a factor into your selection as well. So when Infinity Ward looked at this whole thing as like a compartmentalized section of what you do in the game, but really it's a holistic thing that it got is your class. You might have your perks set up for like an SMG type of class, but it wouldn't really work with like an assault rifle or sniper class, right? Or a weapon like that. So it's all a holistic thing. I don't know why they had to make this change. Now I mentioned how hard it is to track enemies in this game. That's because also there is no red name tag above players' heads. There is no UI, in fact. Normally within shooters, you have a, a name above a player's head when your reticle gets into a certain distance kind of more like within the aim assist range but in Modern for two that's not there at all which i kind of like but then also with how much visual screen shake there is recoil gun smoke stuff like that it can be hard to keep track of your enemies especially i'm playing on mouse and keyboard no aim assist to help me out with that another issue i had with the ui was knowing what perks i had activated at that moment in a match like yeah there is that pop-up that comes up like a notification saying like hey look you got your perk activated but it only lasts like a second oftentimes though since i'm using my senses like infinity ward wants me to use to figure out where players are i'd miss like that notification on my screen so when i heard enemy 
Enemy UAV overhead. I can't tell if I have ghosts activated or not. I would go into the main menu, not there, can't tell. I just have to catch that one section or just kind of assume I'm like five minutes into the game. Maybe I have ghosts on. Now, if you have hopes of the UI completely changing with the game release, it doesn't really look like. Ralph's Valve here, who is a credible leaker, says, yes, the UI UX designer at Infinity Ward previously worked as a UI director at Hulu, which Hulu's UI is really weird. And on release, you won't see much of it at all, a difference to the UI given their plans for other shared experiences post-launch, most likely like a Call of Duty Mobile Warzone. And saying that the Modern Warfare 2 beta wasn't a draft, that's final. So that's what the UI is going to look like when this game releases, and I am terrified of it. Now while on the topic of UI, this is more of an in-game UI thing, and that's the minimap. I know a lot of people in the community are screaming for the red dots to return on this map. Because throughout the beta for Modern Warfare 2, if you fired an unsilenced weapon, you still don't show up on the mini map. Though you do have these additional awareness perks like high alert, which highlights on your screen when someone's looking at you. You have spotter where you're able to see where people place their equipment. Most likely they're near that area. You have tracker, which literally highlights people's footsteps if you're within a distance. And bird's eye actually widens your mini map and actually showcases what people's directions are going when a UAV is up. So with all those awareness perks, with a traditional minimap, you can see how people would be basically just utilizing UI elements to be able to find kills rather than just utilizing their eyes and ears. There's a reason why the radar in Halo is turned off during ranked matches because that stuff provides a player way too much information to know the location of enemy players. It kind of messes with the flow and also the speed of the game as well. Now it does look like a lot of people want a traditional minimap back because with 87.7% saying yes, with almost 30,000 votes, People wanted it back in the game, which I kind of understand, but then also like there's a lot of new things with this game as well that kind of counter the need for a traditional minimap. Personally, I didn't really miss the lack of red dots on the minimap. I was able to find kills and anticipate player movements just fine to a certain degree. With the UAV being such a low kill streak, it's not that hard to get. With all these awareness perks and the audio the way it is in this game, I feel like if you had a traditional minimap, it would just be way too much information for a player. But I think there's need to be something that needs to be changed right there. Though there is an option within the settings of Modern Warfare 2 to be able to turn on a classic minimap, which is something that will probably happen. This happened back in 2019 as well when that game launched. There was no traditional minimap, but then they ended up bringing that into the game. Ultimately, I can kind of see that happening as well, but I really didn't miss it. With the lack of red dots on the minimap while firing, it actually opens up a new door when it comes to the meta loadouts within this game, because before it was all just suppressors on everything back in Modern for 2019. Like the monolithic suppressor was the most overpowered attachment you could possibly have in the game. Even traditional silencers were still kind of overpowered as well. Because having that knowledge of where a player's location is, is one of the biggest tips when it comes to doing better in Call of Duty. Now I'm not sure if this adds into the UI, but I figured kind of like throw it in right afterwards. And that's the spectate mode in this game. And this is also just kind of a really weird change. I thought like it was just a lot of extra work that they had to do for something that people generally don't like. Well, it might be a little bit more of a cinematic angle because that's what you probably would see in the real world, right? With a camera put placed on the helmet or something like that. But functionally, I don't think it's a good idea to have that, mainly to be able to suspect cheaters and call them out properly. People have already found a way to cheat in the beta already. Like it's so it's to be able to look over a third person angle. You're not really able to tell exactly what's going on with that person's angle, making like picking out aiming when it comes to like, I'll oh, be able to predict when the player's around the corner or if they're pre-aiming a corner, exactly perfect. You can't really tell that in third person. You can definitely tell that in first person. And I think it also kind of loses this connection that you have with the player, say that if you're playing search and destroy right, and you don't really see their angle of what they're seeing. And you feel like you kind of experience it through them in a way. Doing this third person angle really kind of just takes you out of the moment and really just, I don't know, it's odd. I don't like it. Let's bring back the classic spectate mode. I mean, it's just way better. So ultimately, this is a long video, but there was a lot to talk about with this. And basically like this beta was just a small little fun sized portion of the full multiplayer experience that we're going to have. I've lived through way too many Call of Duty betas and releases to know to not judge a multiplayer solely on the beta. 
there will be something overpowered or broken at launch, then players will be abusing it, and then it will get nerfed. The beta is really meant to just kind of give you a little bit of a taste of what the experience might be for when you're playing this game. I mean, like the Claymore was unlocked at level 30, same thing with Dead Silence, which would be two major bits of equipment that people will be using a lot. We didn't have access to all the kill streaks either. But Modern Warfare 2 as a game is looking to be absolutely massive with a full size campaign, which I am planning to do a review of Modern Warfare 2019's campaign before the release of Modern Warfare 2's campaign, guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch that video when that does go live. This multiplayer looks to be very expansive, customizable, at least for your weapons, uh, for a multiplayer. You also got co-op special ops, which is supposed to be like a recalling of like the spec ops mode for Modern Warfare 2. I'm really looking forward to that as well. We have Warzone 2 with DMZ tied to that. So even if you didn't like this beta, there's probably something within Modern Warfare 2 that you're going to enjoy. As long as Infinity Ward can fix these weird bugs and crashes, especially on the PC side of things, I'm keeping my pre-order. I'm still excited for Modern Warfare 2. I'm actually more excited about the campaign, if anything else, really. So let me know what you think about the Modern Warfare 2 beta in the comments down below. And if you made it this far into the video, I hope I earned your like. Thank you very much for watching. And here's a video of mine that the YouTube algorithm says you should watch. Check it out. It's right there. It's, it's another content. It's, it's cool.